Welcome, I am Ignacio Fernandez Llorente, professional polo umpire. In this video series, I will explain the rules of polo as presented by the Hurling and Polo Association, usually called the HPA. In each of these videos, I offer a good amount of selected examples of actual fouls to those rules on the field. With these examples, you can learn the equivalent of more than 20 years of polo. So I recommend you watch them carefully, as I believe they show many interesting details that will positively improve your game. In this video, we shall explain the fouls and penalties as stated in Articles 39 and 40. Let's start with penalty number one, which has three necessary requirements. First, it's a foul in the proximity of the goal. Second, it is aimed at avoiding a goal, meaning the goal was not scored. And third, it was intentional or dangerous in nature. We see a dangerous foul in the proximity of the goalpost to save a goal. The goal is scored and a throw in is called. Pasó recién es un penal uno, no sé si alguna vez vieron eso. El gol y throw in, ok? No, no se cambia de lado. Pone tres, tres. Throw in acá chicos, gol y throw in. Veo. It is a goal and a throw in without switching sides. The throw in gives the taxes the opportunity to score a goal as in this case. Here are two examples more of penalty number one. We see in this graph the places where penalties are shot from. 30 yards away from the goal, penalty number two. 40 yards, penalty number three. 60 yards, penalty number four. From anywhere on the field, penalty 5A. From the center, 5B. A corner penalty, or 6, 60 yards from the spot where the ball went out, but no more than 40 yards away from the center. Penalty number 2 can be taken from the place where the foul was committed, or at 30 yards mark. Here are some cases in which you choose to take it on the foul spot. Attacking players stay behind the ball, defending players at least 30 yards away from the ball, and not behind the goalposts. Here we see two red players behind the goal. If white does not score, it will be shot again. You can defend, but only when the ball has been hit and you can enter the playing field. Here, you must wait at 30 yards and go in when the ball is hit. It can be executed by one or more strokes. You cannot get in the field from inside the goalposts, and you must stay at least 30 yards away from the ball. In this case, the player comes from within the posts, and as the ball was well directed to the score, it's a goal. Goal! Listo! Juego! Here a defendant comes out to stop the ball being 30 yards away. That is okay, but the second, third and fourth player come from within the posts. It has to be hit again. Here the ball goes towards the score, defender comes through the goal and he was not 30 yards away. It's a goal. Here the ball goes out, but as a player started between the posts, it is thrown again. Here, a defending player is still on the field. If the shot is a miss, it will be thrown again. There are no 30 yards distance, so it is shot again. There are not 30 yards, there's a foul, but as the ball went in, it's a goal. You cannot be behind the post. If it's a miss, it must be shot again. Attacking players must be behind the line of the ball. If they are outside, on the pony lines, as in this case, they will not participate of the play because they are ahead of the line. Here, the yellow team has a player in front of the ball. Black team has a penalty number 5 to their advantage, where Mark is. But the black team has a player within 30 yards of the ball, so yellow 
will hit again. As the two are fouling, a throw-in will take place. Penalty number two cannot be defended. Defending players behind the line and attackers behind the ball. I insist, you cannot defend. If the ball stops within the field, black team has a penalty 5A to the favor where the marked player was. If the attacking team has a player ahead of the ball, as in this case, a penalty 5A is given to the opposite team. Penalty number 3, 40 yards. Players are allowed to start and try to stop the ball only after it has been hit. I insist they can get into the field and not to do so between the goalposts. So if they start before, if they come out from within the goal, the penalty will be taken again. But if the ball was going towards the goal, it will be a score. We mark two lines. Behind the upper one is where the attacking players have to be, and the bottom line marks the field limit, which players can only pass when the ball has been hit. Here, the red player starts correctly. Here, player in green stops the ball and causes a corner. Here, white hits, the ball hits a pole and goes to the outside, and as light blue started early, it has to be thrown again. Any player can shoot the penalty again. Here a player is behind the goal as it is going out, it will be shot again. Here the player misses, so what has to be checked is that defenders do not come out between the posts, then any other player can hit it, but only with half swing. Here, an attacking player is in front of the ball. Then the defending team takes the 5A penalty from where the player committed foul. When the post is crooked, it has to be imagined straight to decide whether or not a goal was scored. Penalty 4 of 60 yards can be defended from the 30-yard line and the attacking players can stand wherever they want. Penalties number 2, 3, 4 and 6 must be executed with only one stroke or at least that has to be the intention. If the intention is to do it with more than one, a throw-in shall be called. So then it is the intention that has to be observed. If defendants are not in the 30 yards, commonly confused with 40, a penalty number 2 is cost. Here, a player in black is at 40 yards. The goal occurs when the ball goes between the posts. If the ball passes over the posts, it is out. Let's see here. Out. Buena. Penalty 5A or in place from anywhere in the field except on 60 yards when in attack. It can be executed with one or more hits. Players must be at least 30 yards away from the ball. If they are not, the penalty will be taken again, taking an additional 30 yards. And then they must be at least 4 yards from the boards. Five B penalty or middle field can be taken with one or more hits. Juego. Players must be at least thirty yards away from the ball. Juego. 
The six, or penalty corner, is when a defensive player makes the ball go out with his mallet, even after touching it, it touches his horse, the boards, or a goalpost. Here, orange causes a corner. But if the ball touches a teammate or a rival or his horse or the umpire of his horse, it is not a corner. Here, he saves a 60 and causes a corner for white. Here, while player in green touches it and bounces on green team horse, it is not a corner. And here, bounces off the white horse of the blue player, it's not a corner. Let's see how a corner is executed from 60 yards where the ball came running, but not more than 40 yards from the center. The player in black intends to execute with a single shot, but it goes wrong. He can continue playing, but always with a half swing. Here, light blue intends to hit, and then he can continue playing. Here, pink intends to hit and misses, but then uses a full swing. It's fouled by pink. And remember that the final decision if it's a goal or not belongs to the umpire. In this case, the flag boy says goal, but the umpire says it's out. Let's consider the penalty number 7, or throwing. First, you have to throw the ball strongly and underneath the horses. Here, as I throw it too high, it has to be thrown again. The players have to respect the line or T without contact. Hits and throwings must be punished when the ball has not yet been thrown, as it is purple fouls. Or after the ball was thrown in this case, it's fouled by blue. When the ball passes over the outside line thrown by the attackers, a shot from the goal will be executed. The important thing is that it has to be taken by the place where the ball went out. It is very important that the ball is in the line or inside the field, and never outside. Because if he misses, you would have a difficult situation. And the ball must be at least 4 yards from goalposts and sideboards. The opposing players must be behind 30 yards, as if they are not, like we see here, the player in red moves 30 yards ahead. Here, the white player is within the 30 yards. And here, the player in red is within the 30 yards. There can be no contact between the players until the ball is in motion. Let's see these examples where players do not touch until the ball is hit. A player can prepare the ball for a penalty shot and he has up to 15 seconds to do so. When he starts on a counter to make his shot, he can no longer stop or take a second chance. I insist on this. All penalties allow for a single round of preparation.
two players cannot prepare the ball together. Let's see other examples on how to accommodate the ball. Always by one player, then make it a single turn. What has to be observed is that no time is lost. If a player does waste time, a penalty number 7 will be taken against him. You cannot enter a play coming from the side of your opponent team, be it a throw-in, a hit-in or a penalty. And if you happen to be on the opponent's side, you must first reach a member of your own team before you can enter the play. Let's see this example. Is he offside? No, because he gets in the game on the correct side. He would be offside if he would have started on the red mark. When a player falls off his horse, the game must be stopped at a neutral play. But if an accident occurs with a player or a horse, it should be stopped immediately. Let's see some examples that explain how to stop the game. In this case, the player in black falls without consequences. White goes on and scores a goal, and then there's a neutral play. Here, Pink gets hit by the ball. Being able to see it clearly, I see the player is injured and stop the game. This move is extremely difficult. The blue team is a second away of scoring when a white team horse falls. I see it falls safely. I wait for that second, and in neutral play, I blow the whistle. Here a player in purple falls, does not hurt himself. I wait for the moment of neutral play that comes when the ball is out. And here, blue shows signs of having been hit with a mallet. I'm very close to the plate but did not see this blow so I can only stop the run at a neutral play, in this case, after the goal. Let's see this case in which a three-color player gets hit by the ball. The ball is held by the white team, but at the request of the players, I stop the game. There is no neutral play, but there has been a very clear accident, a throw-in is called. Lately, in cases like this, where the ball is clearly in possession of a team, we see that at the throw-in, this team is allowed to take the ball. It is a form of fair play that is seen more and more often. Yo le digo una cosa que se está empezando a usar, es que si se toca throw-in por una cosa como esta, y el otro equipo tiene la pelota, se tira el throw-in y la agarra el equipo que tenía la pelota. Como fair play. ¿Eh? ¿Listo? ¡Veo! Consider this example. The bell goes off, but the umpire does not hear it. The game continues and ends with a foul in place for a player in green. Between chuckers, the guy at the bell indicates that the chucker was over before that play. Then, to start the next chucker, you start from the goal. It all turns back to the moment of the bell. Even if it had been a goal, it is voided. Remember that the game is not stopped if a mallet falls, but it's fair play that an opponent will help you recover it. What demands an immediate stop is a bandage falling off, because it's very dangerous. Let's see two examples where the ball is buried. It's a penalty 7, a throw in from Senna to Burns. Let's see that for it to be a goal, the ball has to completely pass the line. Yeah. 
And for it to be out, the ball has to completely pass the line too. If it is parked on the line, as in this case, it is still at play. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting. See you in the next video of our series. And why not? On the polo field. <laughs>